Dorian just spoke with you, Ralph, about the, you know, the making of this work. <clears throat> I was wondering, before we, we talk a little bit about geography overall and about the, uh, the, the kind of epic journey you've taken over this past decade in the making of these three works, if we, if we could talk a little bit about the actual creation of this installation work. Its origins came from Come Home, Charlie Patton, but you layered in um, multiple projections. Um, you brought back James Baldwin's um, animated uh, face and voice. Um, you brought elements of the stage in, but you added a lot of other elements, and it was really about a, um, layers of information in a gallery space. How, how did you actually go about the process of what to put in and what to leave out, and how to take a work from a stage and create actually something that doesn't feel like sets or props or anything like that? Well, I think just this moment, it's occurring to me that <laughs> I've thought about this before, but I've maybe forgotten. It. I think all the elements that were in this work, in this work, maybe try to be in Come Home, Charlie Patton. Huh. Um, you may not remember, but I think during some of the workshops we had here, that the grass piece was in, and I was working with the horse element. And yeah, now I remember. Basketball hoop basketball started. Basketball hoop started too. here, and that's there. And and Walter, I, as a performer, I wanted it to originally be in the that's work right. as a performer, yeah. and couldn't make that happen. So I think it wasn't like let's finish Come On Charlie Patton and then work on this. I think all these were elements that were also part of that process. And that earlier process, as you know, you know, that we did these, you know, these really important workshops here, you know, where am I kind of playing with questions and, and ideas and then having those informal moments where we can bring in an audience to say this is sort of what we've been working on. Right. And, you know, 90% of that stuff kind of disappeared huh. or was not part of, you know, the final Come Home, Charlie Patton. So I think this was all happening simultaneously. Mm. And then this was an opportunity, this particular piece was an opportunity to kind of go back and recollect some of the um, um, other materials that mm. didn't, weren't able to become part of the stage work. Because if I could have, obviously, I would have wanted all of it in it, you know? <laughs> but then there's that editing process and the demands of, of what a stage work needs. Right. You know? Yeah. This, the politics of what a stage work needs is very different from what, you know, an environment like this can yeah. allow. Can you talk about the politics? You've referenced the politics of performance, the politics of galleries or museums. <coughs> Maybe talk a little bit about what you mean by that? Uh. <coughs> well, I think there's a logic to how we experience things and our logics and, um, you know, a clear example is an audience comes into a space like this, they don't pay. I mean, they pay into the museum, but if I go to a gallery a few in New people York, do. If I go to a gallery in New York, I just walk in sure. and I walk out. I look, right. you know, I'm on my own. It's, it's kind of great. Right. Um, so there's a certain amount of, of independence, you know, that an mm -hmm. audience has with the work here. I feel, and again, this may come from a certain kind of, you know, ni you know f uh, perceived naivete on my part. That allows me a little bit more freedom mm -hmm. in what I feel like I can place in the space to share with them. Um, you know, as a performing artist, most of my life, you know, I have a particular perception on what that means mm. or what I can bring to an audience on a stage um, where an audience is paid like forty, fifty dollars mm. for a ticket. Right. You know? Sure. Despite and it's not something I'm making up. I think, right. like, you know, I know <laughs> a rehearsal work. I know, you know, an experimentation in the studio. Mm -hmm. I know. An unfinished premiere. I mm. know um, a finished work, and I so I feel like over you know over a period of time I, I you know I've grown to understand what an audience deserves, you know, right. um, given that sort of larger 
kind of mm. placement context. Well, it's remarkable to me that you've been able to walk that tightrope because what an audience deserves very often um, translates for performing artists into a kind of compromise, a kind of commercialism, and you've been able to resist that to a certain extent in the creation of your, even your largest theatrical works. And is, has that been a, a, a constant battle? Do you, do you find those tensions exhausting? And, and yeah, they're very exhausting, but in a good way, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, it's enormous work. And where it becomes really useful is that I think of it as forcing me to articulate my question as clearly as I can. Huh. Do you know? Right. And I'm not sure a space like this f forces me to articulate the question in the huh. same way. Do you know? In part because you're not confronted with hundreds, thousands of people right in front of you who are experiencing it in real time. Here you don't really see most of the people. I don't see most of the people. I don't have a conversation with most of the people. I, I understand my articulated parts. Right. So I, you know, there's a certain amount of rigor to that. Right. Um, but the rigor to the process and then the audience is like, you know, it's, it's like a double kind of consciousness almost, huh. referencing Du Bois. <laughs> huh, right. It's like the consciousness of the process and the piece you're making, and then the, the consciousness of, of literally sh and blatantly sharing that with an audience. And not hmm. only an audience, but a captivated audience who can't move. Hmm. I mean, who can, but... Do you miss it all? I mean, because if one <coughs> had to look for the positives in live performance experiences, even high-ticketed high, you know, uh, um, high visibility venue kind of performances. Is that sense of 90 minutes of concentration from an audience, uh, this kind of captive attention? Um, perhaps sometimes galleries, people may breeze through and not really right. feel the need to engage in that level of intensity. Right. 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 No, I think when I think now of performance, I'm, get, I'm, I'm now at a place where I'm, I'm getting really excited about huh. it's possibilities, huh. like if one goes into it thinking really differently about it. Hmm. I think that part of the challenge I had before was there were a lot of assumptions. Right. You know, it's an hour and a half piece and I get an audience. Right. Do you know what I mean? Sure. And yeah. to me it's not enough anymore. Right. So now it's like <laughs> there's a lot more at stake. Huh. You know, the next time I bring a work to a stage, there's a lot more at stake. Huh. Do you feel like and this? what I'm asking of it and an audience, do you know? Yeah. And I think this element of time is that's a great question because, you know, I think I perhaps could be, I would be more interested in, you know, showing a 10 minute work hmm. or a 10 hour work. Right. Right. You know? Sure. That's maybe being a little clearly um, um, conversing you know, some of what I think performance is about. Huh. Right. Which you feel like sometimes you, it's difficult to ask those questions or have that conversation. Very difficult. To, right. <clears throat> and this is getting back to the politics. And you as a presenter know this, that, you know, you know what your audience is going to want to see. You know what's going to make them uncomfortable. You know what's going to tick them off. You know what they're going to love. You know, so there's these givens and we're all trying, not all, but but even me, like there's a place where we want to satisfy certain sure, needs, right? Even if we're, even if we're being experimental, and you we, know, and we don't really want to like confront too much, right? Where something breaks, huh. and I'm right. interested in that place where maybe it breaks, and not just because I want to break it, because that's really interesting to me, right? Uh -huh. Like to create a work where you know most of the audience gets up and walk, gets up and walks out. It'd be interesting right. for me to make a work, like really craft a work from my kind of point of view and aesthetic that was able to do that or at mm. least experiment with that possibility. Mm. What would that be? Without this kind of bruising intention. Right. Mm. It's not any, as easy as one might think. Oh, it's, yeah, yeah. 
and then how willing would you be as a presenter to go there? Uh -huh. you know? So there's, these, there's a number of agendas, I think, that come into play as well. It's interesting with Dorian in this, like, I think Dorian and I never talked to audience. Right. Lots of questions about space and architecture and okay. architecture and how it sounded to him throughout and right. you know and, and I think the audience came later for him maybe but um, I think it's like yeah you know it's interesting it's less I think it, <clears throat> it's one of the great things about the two dif the different disciplines we work with here at the Walker is that there is a different kind of um, concentrate, you know, uh, focus on audience um, in gallery work and in live performance work. Um, although the, it's one of the pleasures of the job is to, to be forced to keep asking those questions. Right. Are we, you know, taking right. enough right. chances? Right. Right. Are right. we right. really doing what our mission says we're doing? Right. And, right. You know, when I, when I saw Come Home Charlie Patton and we presented the work at Pantages, and that uh, actually all three of the geography pieces, I mean, in many ways, it was like you had created an installation, a visual art environment on stage. And, right. and in some ways, your work here in the galleries, it's almost like there's a kind of ghost of a certain kind of theatricality in it. Mm -hmm. And you've kind of bridged those two worlds mm -hmm. by um, placing a certain kind of thinking in, in, an, in the other discipline in a right. certain way. Um, do you see taking your next installation work or um, future visual art work um, uh, even more into a purely visual realm. I know you're doing a drawing show at the kitchen, for instance. Well, the kitchen's a great, you know, I think, intro to your question in that I thought I had, I had thought that um, I had been offered to do a, a show at the upstairs gallery of some of my drawings, which were very much come home trolley pattern yeah. research based, right? So another iteration of this that was also about being in a studio with performers and being, you know, taking my body down south and researching, et cetera. So I don't really have a, um, um, a hierarchy on right. kind of what's better. Or it's just like what's happening, what's, what's required at this time. Uh -huh. Now I need to draw, now I need to move, huh. now I need to research, now I need, you know. Um, so I had this opportunity at the kitchen and I thought, and Deborah Singer, the curator, um, director, was like, well, you know, what do you want to do? We could, you know, maybe we could do something in the theater space, too. And I thought, yeah. well, maybe I could do a combined show, like something up in the gallery and, and a, a performance. performance. But a performance that was um, somehow commenting on the iteration of the visual stuff. Right, yeah. You know, versus just a separate kind of performance. Sure. So, you know, again, going back to this sort of Loop. Cycling the right. looping through yeah. uh, these things that I know are neat to do, but when I really sat down and contemplated it, it was just like impossible. Huh. And mostly because impossible with that language being able to comment on this very different language, or just because you wanted to keep those that words separate. That in time, but also my feeling that when I go back into a theater space, huh. it's going to be really different. Huh. You know? Yeah, and I felt I didn't want to go into it without a lot of time, because then I would just go in and do what I know how to do. Right. Do you know in, in a really interesting way? But have you thought about the journey that you need <laughs> to take to get to that place? Well, I'm doing it. Uh -huh. I am taking the journey now. Huh. And I think for me, just to make sure I'm taking the time to kind of let my body go through what it needs to go through, mm. um, is really important. I mean, I look at a lot of my contemporaries and I watch them do their annual... Next work. Next yeah, work. Right. And I used to do that. The season that they have to put in. And, you know, then the geography came along and it was two years for work and right. then three years for work and then four <laughs> years for work. And I wasn't doing that because I thought it was cool. It was like, right. that's what was being yeah. demanded. Of right. Like, you know, my body and my brain and, and just the materials I was working with. And so now I feel confident that I can trust you know, like huh. being a little bit more mindful and body full of like what needs to happen. Hmm. Like trusting right. a bit more. 
I know something's going to happen. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and I want to make sure I'm not just, <clears throat> you know, working within kind of a, a habit sort of process. Right. And I don't feel those demands from anybody, so it's great. So I, I was, that was going to be my next question. It's sustainable enough that you can, you can take that journey. And, in, uh, in my illusion. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Anne's constantly, you know, and Anne's totally behind it, you know, my man, you know, managing director. And, but we have to fundraise. Sure. And so it's right. an interesting problem. Like, right. I have nothing to fundraise for, hmm. at least through my old sources. Right. But I'm not buying into that need right. it's like well yeah. but i need to i need to wait to huh. let right <laughs> this thing happen in the meantime you know i'm going down south and i'm hanging out with walter and i'm moving around in my living room you're working with elders in our community working with elders in your community and i'm gonna do a um a solo for a monk friend of mine who's opening up a new temple in connecticut huh. he's gonna He's from Haiti. He's a Haitian Buddhist monk. I love ah. it. And he's going to recite the Heart Sutra, and I'm going to do a, a dance to that. Ah. No one's going to see it, but right. that audience. And, you know, <laughs> so great. it's it's right. like it's. I just feel like I'm doing exactly what I need to do now, and and I feel like when I really need to go back to a theater environment, I will know it. Mm. I'll, I will know why I'm there. Right. And I think that's going to be really important because, you know, the whole trilogy was that whole work of that. The evolution and then the resolve is profound. Hmm. Well, and then the energy in my body, the right. resonance of that. It's like, God, what was that? I was going to ask you, could you ever have imagined creating this installation had you not gone on that no. journey? Uh -huh. No. I mean, part one came out of a desperate need to not make those modern dances that I was making at right. that point. Part two came out of needing to get really far away from part one. Uh -huh. and part three came out of needing to get really far away from part three and coming home again. Part two, or, yeah. Part three. Uh-huh, right. Huh. Coming and home, but actually kind of immersing yourself in a part of the country that you actually well, well, you know, not to be cliche about it, but there's no going coming back home. Right. You know, once you leave, you've, you've left. Right. right. <laughs> so, you know, yeah, I didn't, you know, I didn't belong in Mississippi like I didn't belong in, you know, parts of India or, right. <laughs> or Africa. Huh. So I'm homeless right now and it feels really good and, and you know, and useful. Hmm. I feel like that's that displacement or that moving placement is um, necessary right now. Do you feel that that's necessary for artists in general, to a certain extent, because there is sort of an outside role that artists play in our society of looking, um, looking from a different angle than most people do, uh, perhaps? Well, I don't, want, I don't ever want to politicize it, but yeah, I think you know, our job is to take risk. Hmm. You know? are to dig as deeply as we can, as rigorously as we can in the questions that come up for us, mm. and to be really brave and courageous and fearless, and, you know, to sacrifice as much as we can sacrifice mm. in what it is that we're doing. Um, I take it really seriously, you know, without killing ourselves. Right. And without damaging others. Do you also feel, um, you know, you're, you're so adept and so open to so many forms of expression. Um, do you feel like, I mean, geography itself having publication aspects, web projects, um, visual art elements, installations, live performance, um, um, and on and on. Um, do you feel that that's uniquely part of who you are as an artist? Um, or do you feel that that is how artists need to be working today? This, this is the, the world we live in now, and that the artists of the future are going to need to be working uh, amidst, you know, within all of those different worlds. I'm not so sure. I know it is my world right now, and you know the promiscuity of it. 
But I also feel like we need those moments, you know, where we do our Merce Cunningham and it's right. about that one thing forever. Right. Yeah. You know, or it's Robert Ryman, you know, I mean, the artists that I, you know, truly admire and love are, you know, those that get up and do the same thing. Huh every day differently right <laughs> <laughs> and i think in part because i'm not that way uh -huh. you know and my obsession you know lasts a few months a few weeks a couple years and then i have to right then it, then it's gone and it's like yeah. it's done um huh. so i'm not so sure i think we need both you huh. know i right. think i think it's about the whole spectrum that the one thing you know, the one mantra over and over and over again, that kind of discipline is the same as um, of, you know, caring for, for, for too many people or mm. caring for too many um, parts of one's life. Hmm. Can you just explain that? Well, you know, it's like when you think of generosity, you know, and, and this becomes really Buddhist, I think, but generosity is really wide, but generosity comes from a, a basic and essential love of the self. Hmm. Do you know? Hmm. So to really care for the world, you've got to really care for yourself. Hmm. So where do you begin the practice? Well, you have to be practicing both. Right all the time. Yeah. Do you right. know? It's not an issue of which which comes first or Yeah, or yeah, I think. Mm -hmm. I mean that's that's certainly something that I, I kind of um um I don't know if it's a struggle but um um wrestle with. Mm. And I think for me now I've I've found a place where, you know, I settle in with what I'm doing when I'm called to do it. Right. Do you know? Which is... Um, so, I've, the, for instance, this particular exhibit, now that I've done this, you know, it just, it's not like I want to go and do this again somewhere else. Right. Do you know? Yeah. Now all I'm thinking about is how do I go back to the stage? Huh. Yeah, I, I was going <laughs> to I was gonna ask I that earlier. It sort of cleansed the palate in a certain way? It just... Like, it uh, just creates more uh, um, enormous questions, huh. do you know? Yeah. Because it's not like I did this and I did this really well, it's like I did this, and what does that have to do with what I did before? Hmm. And what does this have to do with what's going to come next? What is the next? Hmm. In looking back at these nine, nine years, um, working together and uh, just your journey through geography, um, any last thoughts you have about about um, that 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 experience that that kind of um, that kind of journey you went on? Uh, um, and when I think back on it, it's hard to believe I did it, mm -hmm. and it's hard to believe I had some of the experiences I had. Um, I think. After I finished, there were a few months when I thought, okay, I deserve something for this. <laughs> I thought that too. I kept, I kept it really private, but I was walking down the street, and, you know, for a good couple of months thinking, I deserve something for this. <laughs> something more than an installation at the walk. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, karma, it's in your hands. Um, you know, of course, I couldn't have said in the process of it that um, I knew what I was going to accomplish. Mm. But at the end, I feel I, I accomplished, I think, what I set out to do. Mm. And that was more about just the atmospheric experience of it. Do you know? Mm -hmm. like all the right things happened in retrospect. And then, of course, in the process of it, it was just, you know, um, it just felt so out of control and dangerous and foreign. Right. And I've, I've said many, many times. Sometimes that chaotic. And, always yeah. chaotic. And I, right. I've said many times, up until come, you know, bef up to come home Charlie Patton, which I felt really different about. But with geography and tree, um, 
you know, I can't say I loved those works. Right. You know, as the an process artist. or the the final works themselves. Well, in retrospect, I love the process, but uh -huh. the works themselves, uh -huh. I'm not sure if I like them as hmm. pieces of art. You know, whatever that was. But I don't think I was trying to make pieces of art. Hmm. You know. I called those works live conversations, hmm. live articulated conversations about, you know, being a foreigner and huh. power and, you know, f you know, art, right. cultural art processes, etc. With come, Char with come home, Charlie Patton, I wanted to make a good work of art, hmm. so I made that work. The process was more akin to parts, you know, tree and ge and, and geography. But the consciousness of crafting and constructing a work w was very different. Hmm. I went in really wanting to make a work that um, announced more and discussed more than just a conversation. Hmm. Yes, there were big questions there, but it was also, um, I wanted to own it more as hmm. an artist. And I felt like that happened. So it really brought me back, I think, kind of. Yeah. So maybe that part is where I, you are I came home. Kind of. Uh huh. Huh. Well, Ralph, thank you very much for taking this this time.